Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you for joining to my um, session today. Offloading calculations from WordPress onto outer services such as AWS and Google. So this is my title. Um, uh, my name is Shin. I create websites for my clients. Uh, clients are based in Japan and in Thailand. I used to live in Bangkok for two and a half years. And now I'm living on a Japanese small island with 150 people. So this is me working in Bangkok. And this is the island I live now. And this is my daughter uh, cleaning the house. Yeah, so uh, this is my life. And my life is totally backed up by WordPress, the software, and its community. I try giving back to the community through translation and theme review and running events. So events include meetups in Thailand. Yeah. And on my island, this is really small, like uh, five people. This was uh, like a translation day. And then um, this is the big one, World Camp Tokyo 2012 with uh, uh, 1,400 people. Yeah, so that's me. And uh, to the point, um, high traffic websites and spiky access, you suddenly get a lot of access, and WordPress. So it's, it's a bit tough sometimes when you get a lot of traffic, maybe 10 people uh, come to your website within like 0 0.1 second. Then your WordPress might not work, right? So WordPress is a great tool to build websites and serve contents, but when the website really grow, then uh, you need to think more and to deliver the content to the, all the audience, like all the time, without failing. So of course, there are a lot of things you can do to like, speed up your website or to, to make it light. But today, I want to focus on uh, non-WordPress things. So these are the things you can do uh, within WordPress. And there are things you, you can do outside. And we w I want to focus on like outside of the WordPress or PHP or the server. So the bas basic idea is uh, not letting, like, don't let the WordPress do what, what WordPress is not good at, or WordPress is not made for. So these are things to offload. Uh, searching, sorting, uh, showing related posts or related products, uh, recommending contents based on users' preference, and logging lots of data, such as like access log or security log, or backing up itself. Yeah. So when your website needs to really scale, uh, these things can be done inside WordPress, but when it scales, uh, you need to scale your website, then you need to um, do these things outside of WordPress. So let's look at this model. Uh, this describes how usual plugins work. Uh, plugins are included inside one big process, the white one. So when WordPress is loaded, plugins hook into WordPress, right? And then what it works as a one big process. This is the like, offloading model. So let's look at the purple boxes in the middle. So I, I wrote a connector plugin. So they are connector plugins, and the work itself is done outside of the WordPress. Uh, I wrote microservice. So you connect the WordPress core and the microservices uh, through API. So this is the basic idea to when you want to offload something. And uh, this idea is not new. It's a, it's a really like, uh, common and old idea. For example, Akismet. So Akismet plugin uh, does a lot of things in also inside WordPress. Like they have 
the admin page. Uh, they add admin menu, list spam comments, like they offer like mark spam buttons. But the judgment, the core function, the judgment whether a comment is a spam or not, it's done outside of WordPress. It's done um, at uh, a Kismet server, like a server hosted by uh, Automatic. So when you want to know this comment is good or not, then you send information, IP address and uh, stuff like that, to the Akismet server. They collect the data. They know if they are good or not. And they uh, give you the feedback. And then it says it's a spam. So you can delete them. Right? So uh, here, Akismet plugin is working as a connector plugin. You connect your WordPress and something outside of WordPress. And uh, we can find more similar uh, like plugins, like connector plugins uh, in, for example, security fields. Most of the security plugins offer services uh, which happen outside of WordPress, uh, such as like blocking bad access. Like blocking should happen outside, right? When it reaches your WordPress, it's like no use. So it, it needs to uh, happen outside and logging and so on. Also, um, some of the features in Jetpack plugin, uh, they are the same concept. You send data or you ask someone to do something, they do, they give you the feedback. Okay, so uh, cases, uh, offloading, uh, ranking, popular posts. Um, okay, so we want to show the popular posts below article. And the post needs to be like this. Top three most viewed posts within these seven days uh, in a category JavaScript or anything like Singapore. Under slash en slash path. I mean example.com slash en slash. So you can do that um, with WordPress too. Uh, but to achieve this only inside WordPress, uh, basically, the plugin uh, needs to log every access, like this one, this access, uh, this timestamp, and uh, yeah, this URL or ID, post ID, or stuff like that. You, every access adds one new row to your database. So what happens? Um, you get million access a day, then like million rows, 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 and that's really bad for um, like scalability. So then, uh, who should do this? Logging and uh, calculation, like which are the best within this um, like criteria or like the conditions. So we have uh, another software we, I think everybody use here. So that's uh, Google Analytics. So Google Analytics is made for that. So we need to use that data. Uh, this is a plugin by Horike, a uh, Japanese guy. Uh, this plugin fetches data from Google Analytics uh, through its API. Can you see this? So uh, with three posts and uh, within seven days, and post type is post, category is JavaScript, and we need to filter them with uh, uh, the path. So it's going to be written like this. And then uh, you give it, give this array to SGA ranking get data. Then you get the data. And the data come from um, uh, Google Analytics. And this plugin uh, always caches the result because you, you don't want to um, ask every time, maybe once an hour. Right? Then uh, you are not logging, you are not calculating. That sort of thing is done outside, like um, at Google Analytics service. Okay, next one. Uh, offload search uh, related posts. Um, so what we want to do is, th these are like example, like th the cases. So we want to look up the full text of an article and look for a really related post. So, um, yeah, or we need to look up the taxonomy terms and post meta too. 
And, but we don't need to have the perfect match. Like we want to uh, look for um, contents, even someone misspelled. And rate the post with frequency rate. So uh, the usual search uh, lists, just lists, if it has the contents has the words you search. And maybe you want to search products in your e-commerce website. Um, you want to sort by price, or you want to uh, search by uh, price range. And then these kind of things are really bad for your uh, performance. Because, uh, for example, the price, um, and in most cases, uh, prices are saved in like meta field, maybe post meta. And they are not indexed in MySQL. So if you want to sort like top five, then what it's going to do is, okay, let's look at all the posts and uh, which has the post type product. And let's look up to the like meta table and then list everything and sort it. You can imagine how slow it's, it's going to be. So it's really um, difficult. And this is a plugin for that, uh, Elastic Press. Uh, it's written by uh, Tenup. And we have Elastic Commerce related items. Authors are Horike and Hide Okamoto and more. And Elastic Commerce Search Form or WP Simple Elastic Search. So Elastic Search um, is a search server. It's a software, it's open source project and you can store and pull data through RESTful API right, uh, interface. So it's good for full text search or relevant re result or fuzzy matching, not perfect matching. And uh, inside WordPress, you can use it for like sorting, searching, uh, especially like searching like metadata or meta um, I don't know, taxonomies or terms or term meta. And you, you just put the data and you tell how you want the data back. Then it's really quick. So maybe let's look at a demo. Uh, can I click this? No. Uh, where is the... Uh, So it's a demo website. So here we have um, a lot of uh, products. And then, uh, what it says, high to low. Okay. We go back to, ah, uh, yeah, default sorting. It's a menu order. Then we want to uh, sort this by popularity like this, or a rating, or maybe the price high to low. Yeah. So this calculation is not done inside WordPress. So it's asking uh, to Elasticsearch, and then they give you back the, the answer. You render the result. So next uh, step, uh, caching. So um, the easiest way to be happy with high traffic is caching. And especially uh, we like uh, caching on CDNs. So caching can be done inside like PHP. You cache everything into your database. You don't query, but you just get something from the, like get the HTML from the database. That's number one. Or you can, um, like offload that to server level, like Vanish or Nginx proxy caching. But it's still happening inside your server, right? So access comes to your server. WordPress maybe doesn't move, but uh, your server is working. And if you cache your HTML, like images, uh, style sheets, and uh, scripts, and also the HTML, uh, then 
access doesn't reach to your server, then you don't need to work. Then you, you can keep it really cheap. So the problem is uh, how to control the cache. So there is a plugin for that. So C3 Cloud Front Cache Controller. So we cache almost everything, including that generated HTML. So before we were um, caching contents on Nginx, proxy caching server. Uh, but after CloudFront, uh, it's a service um, inside AWS. It's a CDN service. It's a global one. Then uh, we found um, it's, it's a lot easier to do there. Um, yeah. So this is the plugin we use to control the cache on the CDN. Uh, CloudFront. Uh, it deletes uh, cached content from the CDN when you click the delete button, of course, or when you publish something or you update your contents, then it just delete everything. Yeah. Mm. And backups, storage, and more. So we want to do outside of OnePlus these kind of things. So this is a like I map. This is a map which maps like what uh, is done where. And these are like AWS icons, but here you can see many things are offloaded from WordPress. Um, so there's our AMI or this one EC2 server. So there uh, there is PHP and your WordPress. It's there. And then you have MySQL, that's, but it's outside of your server. So it's outside of your OS. It's there, RDS DB instance. So it's a, a Amazon's um, database service. So you can just use the service. You don't need to set up some, something like server, and you, you install OS, and your OS um, needs uh, this, this, this middleware. You don't need to do that. You just use the service. And that one uh, will back up everything. Like you can roll back to any point, uh, which means you don't need to back up your database. You don't need to run like WP DB export and send it somewhere and all the stuff. You don't need to do that. You, you just leave that there. And uh, the medias are stored in Amazon S3. It's a storage service. It's cheap. So. Um, instead of sending your um, uploads, like medias, to your WP content slash uh, uploads slash uh, 2016 something something, uh, you do that, but you sync it to uh, Amazon S3. Then uh, it's really difficult to lose contents from S3, so, which means you don't need to um, do backups, right? Like it's backed up there. And you can create backup of backup too. I mean, S3 backup too. And then, um, uh, and then your source code, like themes and plugins and WordPress core or other files, uh, they can be like anywhere, like Git or something. Right? Then you can like switch anything. Like you can switch the database, you can switch the EC2 server itself because PHP runs, and you have your source code, and you have tested, then everything works. So backup is there, and you have the cloud front. So if we add here the Google Analytics simple GA ranking or other tools, like you can offload uh, your comment to maybe Discuss or um, like Facebook comments, that's also like you're offloading something outside. And other like asynchronous tools, um, then uh, I think WordPress look like this. So this is the model we saw uh, before. Uh, you have WordPress core and connector plugins and other services like Google, Amazon, Discuss, Facebook, and stuff like that. So, but this one is like we we look at WordPress as a like hub or it's a, it's the center. But uh, maybe uh, we need to change different, uh, think differently. So this is about building uh, microservices. So system of like multiple components, like, and then uh, components they work like individually, like independently. They they can work uh, alone. 
and each components are loosely coupled through a RESTful API or some kind of APIs. Five minutes, yeah. Then this one should look like this. So distributed services model, I, I named this. So, but you have a lot of things you can use. Right? And then WordPress can be one of them. So think like WordPress has now a WP API. Uh, it's to communicate with others, right? So we have, yeah, I, I love WordPress. WordPress saved my life. But we don't need to think like, OK, we start from WordPress. Can we do this with WordPress? I, I told you, like, let's don't do this. Uh, let's not do this. But like, how can I offload stuff? This is the like, second stage. May maybe la the last stage would look like this. We can have a lot of things. We can connect them. Each, uh, and one of them is WordPress. This is the um, model. And one thing uh, I like about this model is like, if you do this, then you can come back to the real good point of WordPress. So WordPress's mission is uh, democratization of publishing, which means like everyone can publish what they want anywhere and freely. So, and the thing we want to do is uh, like deliver your contents, your thought, your products to someone. Then uh, it's not like a logging or like security. You don't want to care about security when you want to tell something, some, somebody something. So we need to, um, we, this way we can like really concentrate this way or even this way we can really concentrate on uh, what WordPress uh, offer us or what, what we want to do with WordPress. Uh, so the talk started from how to offload, how to like serve the high traffic website. But if we choose this model, uh, there are a lot. Like we can like come back to the WordPress strong point. And that was my talk today. Yeah, questions? Maybe? Uh, I think you have quite an interesting life, um, <laughs> like uh, okay. living on island and stuff. Yeah. So, and like you said, anybody has any questions for him? Maybe or no? Okay. okay. So uh, thank you again. Uh, let's head out for lunch, and we'll meet you back at one thirty. See you. <laughs>